This is not just Christian television. This is life television. Welcome to Notes on Life. Hello and welcome to Notes on Live Television. I'm Pastor Teacher Wayne Estrada. And I'm Dr. Jeannie Sheffield Estrada. And if this is your first time here, a very, very warm welcome and a big thank you for joining us today. We promise to make it worth your time. Our theme at notesonlive.org is encouragement for the believer and evangelism for the lost. And the goal of both our online and televised ministry is to consistently provide people with real, authentic, and valuable notes on how to live life successfully based on the principles and teachings of the Bible. Wayne, that's right. And in an intensive media-dominated world, there's a lot of things to distract us from the practical and profound truth that the Word of God, the Bible, is giving us. Mm -hmm. So with this in mind, we always strive to present you with high quality content that is worth watching. And worth your time and attention. This is program <laughs> 200, so don't touch that dial as they used to say on the old time TV shows. And please stay with us for the next half hour. I think you'll find what we have to share is not just informative, but more importantly, will be beneficial, inspirational, and life-changing. Yes, and along these lines, if you have watched our previous programs, then you might notice that we like to vary the presentation every week, and we keep things moving and interesting, and this week, it's no exception. I will continue my four-part of my eight-part series on crossing over the bridge to forgiveness. But before that, in our first segment today, we'd like to share a little bit about our background and our core ministry called Your Daily Notes and what these notes are all about. So let's get going with it, Wayne. Well, thank you, Jeannie. Notes on Life started very simply back in 2016 when we filmed and posted a couple of rather low-tech YouTube videos on the Bible. I was still working full time in the IT world and traveling almost every week, so there wasn't a lot of time to add any new videos. But then, Jeannie, you had a great idea. <laughs> yeah, that was true. And it was from my seminary training and daily Bible study and meditation on the scriptures. So I thought it might be a good idea to write down some insights, and that led me to think about things that others might benefit from a short, encouraging message throughout the week. Well, after that, then one thing led to another. And before she knew it, it <laughs> evolved into a series of daily messages. <laughs> the question is, what will we call this thing? So one day standing in our beautiful home in Washington, D.C., in the living room in front of the grand piano, where all the notes were, we realized that these were notes and it was about life. But wait a minute. <laughs> We're both musicians also, so why not combine the two ideas together? So we hit on a name and the theme of Notes on Life, which is an appropriate double entendre since we are both musicians and that, you know, we play notes. He's on trumpet, I'm on piano and voice, mm -hmm. and now writing notes and in future programs we'll be performing and playing notes, so you guys stay with us. Okay. That's, okay. that's right. So in brief, that's how your daily notes and notes on life got started. And from there, Jeannie began writing a daily message and shared these with uh, via email with friends and family. Right. And that grew and then started. they started sharing it with others and telling others about the notes. <coughs> and soon other people were asking to get the notes in their emails as well. And you guys, do you know that we have written over 390 notes? And you can find all of them on our website. All you have to do is go to notesonlife.org 
And the first thing you'll see at the top of the page each day is the latest message. There's even a link to read it on a separate page. And of course, the website is mobile friendly. So you can read these on your smartphone or your tablet or your regular laptop. Read it on your PC too. So that leads us to our most often asked question. And that is, how in the world do you two keep coming up with all these messages each day? <laughs> and actually, it's a simple answer. It's true, but I'd be lying if I didn't sometimes get writer's block when I sit down at my keyboard. <laughs> yeah, well, same here, but we have a secret <laughs> weapon, don't we? <laughs> We've got that secret, secret weapon. Yes, we do. And it's the Holy Spirit. Spirit. It never ceases to amaze us how inspiration just seems to come out of the air. So what we'd like to do now is we want to show you or share with you some of the few of our daily note messages, but give you some background about where some of these particular messages came from. Are you ready? Yeah, so Jeannie, this is one segment in particular that I'm really going to enjoy because one thing I've seen over and over again about the Lord is that number one, he's the God of the unexpected, and two, he's the God of the unexpected good. Some of these ideas seem to just pop out of nowhere. But when they do, it never ceases to amaze both of us how inspiration comes that way. And I can honestly tell all of you that I, uh, and I think I speak for Jeannie as well, that we can't take any credit for these notes no. or the production of this TV program because as we just said a minute ago, these inspirations come at some of the oddest and most unexpected times. So Jeannie, why don't you start off with one of your stories? <laughs> okay, I've got a great idea. Why don't you start with 0001? That's the first story. <laughs> that's right. That's the first story yeah, I ever It's called wrote. A Tandem Ride with Jesus. <laughs> okay. Yes. So how did you get to that story? Well, the thing was, it was a story that a man wrote, and I just tweaked it some and changed it up. It's about a guy who... Um, went on a ride with Jesus. Okay, so that's how some of these stories start off. They can just start off by, in that case, it was a story. Now, my story is kind of transportation related as well, but not on the bicycle, but in a car. Several years ago, I was driving across Nevada on Highway 50, which is called the loneliest highway in America. And we all have that mystical, great American road trip where you see that road that goes off that seems to infinity. Well, I measured it and found out that those infinity roads will at maximum go 20 miles. And it made me think, as the title says, the end of that road of life is closer than you think. And that was the inspiration for that particular message. That's message 0268. Well, this story is also car related. Mm -hmm. Wayne and I were driving one day down Interstate 81 in the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia. And I saw this billboard and it just said, unplug and recharge. And she went, woo, that gives me an idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, unplug from the world and recharge with God. That's right. And we spend so much time glued to our tablets and cell phones and all that, that we really need to do that. You can read that in article 0228. Okay, so here we go with another yet car driving story. I was uh, trucking down the interstate one day and I saw this giant white billboard with black letters and all it said was, Jesus is alive. <laughs> and it struck me like a ton of bricks. And I thought, wow, Jesus is alive, true or false. And the very first uh, line in that article was, uh, Jesus is alive, true or false. If you're a p politician in Washington, D.C., present is not an option. And this is really the heart of the gospel because either you believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead or you didn't. So that's article number 0337. Okay. You want to still stay on the road? Uh, we'll stay on the road, sure. <laughs> okay. okay. I remember when we were up in the Tennessee mountains on our way to see our friends Dan and Meredith, and we passed this bridge. And I said, wow, that's a key to have some people live their lives walking across a bridge to nowhere. And we saw this red bridge and it had a sign that said the bridge to nowhere. And it made us think about people's lives. And in fact, we were kind of arguing, do you want to write that article or you want me to write that article? Right. So, so, <laughs> so she wound up writing it and that's article 0311. By the way, you can go to our website and click on the library link and it'll take you to a page of all the articles and you can either scroll down 
or you can click on another button to view all of them by name, or you can type in the article numbers, and that's how you can read. If you oh, yes. There's another article I wrote once. Um, it's called You Create Your Own Atmosphere. You know, we loved our home in Washington. It was hard for us to leave it. Um, but I have to tell you that the thing about your home is that you can create a very positive, happy attitude, or you can fill it up with negativity and put a dark a uh, atmosphere in there, and that's not what you want to do. This is an article to show you how you can create your own atmosphere and fill it with the Holy Spirit. A lot of it has to do with just your thoughts, and as a man thinketh, so is he. So we can fill up our home with beautiful things and have a positive attitude, but we can also fill up our mind with things like that. Right. You know, Wayne and I are constantly sitting at our, at our keyboard. Well, that's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> and sitting at my desk one day, um, there was a simple task of turning on my desk light that got me to thinking about what is the source of all power? And I came up with this idea, plug into the power source. And you know, that power source is God Almighty. And you know what? I want to tell you all, if you go to our website and you look to the side of our articles, Wayne spends a whole lot of time creating some very interesting graphics. And this graphic is very cool. Yeah, it actually was three pictures. There was the light bulb was one picture, the man hand of the cross, and then the plug going into the wall. And so I colorized these. And I've always tried to get a picture that will grab your attention and tie in nicely with the article. So we put a lot of care into our articles that we want them to be meaningful, again, encouragement for the believer and evangelist and for the lost. And for, we'll end on this last one here. Um, we've talked about inspiration come from different places, but I was having lunch with a good friend of mine, Pastor Dick Fisher, and he made a comment that I found was interesting about our lives, that if we just committed one simple sin a day, one little white lie or took a cookie we shouldn't take, for our entire life, and God were to list them line by line by line. There'd be thousands of lines long. Don't you know? And, and I, I, I thought about this because if you've ever been to court, you know, you might have gotten a speeding ticket or gone through a stoplight. But if you had gone through a stoplight and failed to yield and failed to turn signal, you're standing <laughs> before the judge, you don't have a leg to stand on. So the question is, how long is your rap sheet? And the reality <laughs> is that if you don't know Christ, Everybody has a rap sheet that's thousands of lines long. And when yes. you stand before that judge uh, at, at the end time of your life, you don't have anything to stand on except if Jesus Christ has come in and he's paid for all of your sins. So how long is your rap sheet? Um, like the graphic there with the handcuffs and the fingerprints, that's Article 0327. So check that out. So that was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed both these stories, and a little bit of the background about them and also about Notes on Life. And in our next segment, Dr. Jeannie is going to present part four of her ongoing forgiveness series on crossing over the bridge to freedom. Hello, and welcome again to all my bridge partners, and a warm welcome to all of you to this new, exciting, risk-taking journey. We're crossing over the bridge to freedom holding the Lord's hand. I'm so glad you're here because it's never too late to join us. We meet again today in the middle of our eight-week study on the many issues of forgiveness. When we first started, remember, with the topic of why should I forgive someone who's hurt me? And then we discussed, I can forgive, but I can't forget. Last week, we focus deeply on the concentrated area in our lives on the deep-rooted issue, why can't I forgive myself? Now today, we're addressing the topic some of you may have had trouble with at times in your life, and that's the issue of forgiving God. Every step you're taking forward is a step closer to your goal. Remember that place we talked about where we're headed? The restoration place, the place of surrender, the place 
of peace, where forgiveness finally lives inside your soul. It's always a good idea for you guys to take notes as we're going along. So grab your pen and your paper and let's get ready, okay? Have you ever been angry with God? Do you think God turned his back on you during those moments when you shouted out to him or when you cried your heart out and he seemed to be a million miles away and moments that felt like he didn't seem to care or listen to you? One way we retaliate is to stay angry with him. We may think that we can hurt God the way it would hurt us if a loved one treated us with bitter coldness. Another way is to reject God by ignoring his existence. Still another is to say that he didn't cooperate with our plans. We're free to break as many rules as we like, right? Yet, you might think, he'd better not try to tell me I'm in the wrong when he's the one who should answer for wronging me. Well, believe it or not, even the strongest Christians ask serious questions about God's investments in the hard circumstances in our lives. We immediately want to turn to God when bad things happen to us. In our anger or frustration, we might ask, where were you when this was happening to me? Why did you allow this to happen? Why didn't you intervene? Well, you're only human, so don't be upset or condemn yourself. God wants to know your feelings, and he doesn't want you to hide anything from him. But instead, he wants to heal and cleanse the wounds you may have held inside for a long time. Because here's the main issue, uh, that we have to face a great many lies at the bottom of it all. Something's risen up from the bottom and it's come up to the surface. The fact is that we do not naturally respect God for being God, nor do we naturally want to know his will. What am I saying here? Stay with me. We must recognize the truth at a deeper level than before. God's not like anybody else. To know God, to truly know him, is to stand in awe of him. Think about it. God is the only one who knows all things. He knows every single thing about you in microscopic detail. He's known in Hebrew as El Roy, the God who sees all. God is so vast and eternal that he is also known as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning, the end. Sometimes he allows things to happen in our lives to teach us lessons, lessons that will mature us and give us wisdom with hard lessons to teach us humility. Humility that breaks down barriers and discord with others. I hope you understand that. It's humility that breaks it all. Sometimes he just says no. And we need to understand that when he says no, it's for our good. To know God means there is total trust in him. That he has our best interests at heart. And everything is up to him. God has every right to rule in our lives. Do you know why? Because he created us. He says in Isaiah 46, 9, I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Listen to the words of Jesus in John 14, 15 through 17. If you love me, you will keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he lives with you and will be with you. 
Many people are afraid to admit that they're angry or even disappointed at God. For one thing, it's not what good Christians do. We may think, what if God gets angry with me? Who wants to live a life looking over his shoulder and waiting for God's judgment to strike? When the writers of the scriptures tell us to fear God, they're not telling us to be fearful of him. Fear means to put our trust solely in God, to revere him. Yes, we know that the Bible tells us that God is holy. God's loving and good in all his ways. He has no evil in him. In fact, the thing Satan intends for evil, God can turn into blessings. All right, now, let's look at how God is so helpful in helping you get rid of your anger toward him. God is not uncomfortable with your anger. He's not threatened by it. God requires you to be honest with yourself and Him. Harboring anger alienates you from God and it reduces your faith. When you refuse to be completely honest with God, your relationship with Him will stagnate. Eventually, it'll stop altogether. God wants you to admit you need to forgive Him. He sees this problem and he wants to call it to your attention. Most of us need to take this first step to a new and deeper relationship with our Father. As we've been crossing over our imaginary bridge to forgiveness in the previous articles, we've discussed in detail about the danger of unforgiveness and how it will turn into bitterness if not arrested. Somewhere inside of us, when we're harmed by another or situation and God did not prevent it, we're tempted to believe that God's words are not just promises that hold empty sincerity. Even our prayers seem to go nowhere and seem to hit the ceiling, leaving us feeling abandoned. But take heart. Here are some questions worth taking stock. Have you stopped trusting God to handle all things, especially those things that have hurt you? If so, you can see how this has made you lose faith in him. Don't give up now. Hang on, there's good news ahead. Are you ready to get completely honest with yourself and admit your hurt feelings toward God? Then let me point you to Jesus. This may surprise you, but did you know that sometimes your God has been your own will? It begins with humility. Humility marks one of the greatest turning points in anyone's life. It can lead us to begin following God. Humility means that we can take our place in the true order of things. It causes us to step into the position of God's plan and not our own. We agree to cooperate with the greater plan He providentially is working out. James 4.10 reminds us, humble yourself before the Lord and he will exalt you. Ephesians 4.2 also says, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Humility can lead us to begin following God, not only with a new spirit and a new attitude, but to a new path possibly to a new destination, that destination where you and I are headed. We make life so much more complicated when, the, when we think life is all about me, when we think the world revolves around our universe. We live in a frustration because the rest of the world refuses to revolve around us. This includes God, the one we may at times be angry with, when we remember to look at the bigger picture, though, and we calm down our blood pressure, we'll be able to use all the proposals I've been offering to you to get back in right standing with God. Without the potter, clay is just dirt. The Lord formed man from dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. 
Genesis 2-7. If you're ready to come to your Heavenly Father and ask Him to forgive you for your anger towards Him, and you're willing to get back into your right position with Him, let's pray together. Realize I've sinned against you, and I'm very sorry. Thank you for giving me your living word, your holy Bible to read. I want to understand what I need to learn about forgiveness and your insight in how I can let the past go through the scriptures and what you are teaching me. Stay with me, Lord, as I keep taking more steps forward on this bridge to freedom. Stay with me until I find a restoration place. Please keep holding on to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this is the end of today's program, and as always, it's a privilege for Jeannie and I to bring to you these programs and present the Word of God to, into your home each week. If you found these programs to be a blessing and a benefit, please sign our guest book on our website. You can also send us an email at pastors at notesonlive.org and let us know what you thought of today's program. Of course, the core of this ministry started with and continues to be your daily notes which are short, impactful messages that are a spiritual vitamin to get your day going. You can read them directly from the top page of our website or see them on facebook.com slash get notes on life or better yet, you can subscribe and get it automatically in your email box. Just go to notesonlife.org slash subscribe and rest assured we do not share your emails with anyone. And Dr. Jeannie will be back next week and continue her next series on forgiveness. In the meantime, you can also read all the articles about forgiveness on our website, again at notesonlife.org slash forgiveness. And remember also that you can watch this and all our previous programs at any time online, on television, your computer or mobile device. Just click on the tile at the top of our website notesonlife.org to review these 24 hours a day and seven days a week. But the most important thing is that Jesus, Jesus is, is the, the way, way, the truth, truth and, and the life. life. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. are your notes on life God has given to you